Hello and welcome to database topic lesson one. As you can see from the slide, we're going to cover a number of topics. And I'll give you a few moments just to look at the list before we move on. This term, you will have your last two topics to cover. These being databases and networking. The last week of this term will be devoted to recapping over the topics you have already covered. Please make sure that right from the start of this term, you are preparing your revision notes. One really good way to revise is to answer topic questions with your topic booklet open and next to you. Then the following day, go over the same questions again. Anything that you do not know needs to be put down on a revision card. Material you do know does not need to be put down on a revision card. Using mind maps and drawings are equally good ways to remember information. It's whatever works best for you. Please make sure that you do not simply revise straight out of the book. This is the worst way to revise and will most likely not give you the success that you want. So don't be lazy. You should aim to answer every question, every exam that is available to you. As you know, all of these questions are in Dropbox. The database and network topics will have specific questions given to you each week and these will be found in Sector as well as in Dropbox. In short, start revising now. So let's get started on our database topic. As you know, we have covered databases quite a lot in years 9, 10 and 11. So the next few slides should just be revision for you. Let's start at the beginning. A database is simply a place to store things. Databases which we can touch would be folders, boxes, filing cabinets, phone books, even shelves. Databases can be software as well. Look at your phone. You will have a contact book, calendar, notes, reminders, and probably many other apps that help you to store and manage your information. On a much bigger scale, the backbone of the internet is based on databases. The websites that you type into the bar at the top of your browser, the Uniform Resource Locator, or URL, needs to be converted to an IP address made up of numbers. These are stored around the internet in Domain Name Servers, or DNS. Without them, we would not have the internet. We will look at DNS in our network topic. Databases are used in e-commerce. So all transactions, either with the bank or retail companies like Amazon and Gumtree, or social media sites like Facebook or streaming services like Netflix, all use databases to store your details and preferences. So databases are fundamental to everyday living. You will be creating both flat file and relational databases in Access. Access is software you should be fairly familiar with having used it over the past two or three years. You should, however, be aware that it is not only Access that is used in the world of work. LibreBase can be used, but a more popular software is FileMaker. These use similar ways for creating database tables as in Access. At this point, you may have realized that this topic has both a theory and practical element to it. The practical work, which will be part of your assessment, will involve working through a large practical work booklet called the newsagent. 
What you can look forward to in this topic as part of your assessment are three pieces of work to be completed. These are an assessment, which is in two parts, a practical test and a theory test. Earlier, I talked about flat file and relational databases. Let's talk about these types of databases. Your flat file database is the simplest of databases to create. They can be created in Access and in an Excel spreadsheet. They will have one record per line and are in a single table with no connection to any other table. These flat file tables are often created from comma separated variable files, also known as CSV. In this picture, you see that the items are separated by a comma, also called a delimiter. Flat file databases are useful if you're going to store only a small amount of data on the table. However, when the tables get larger, problems occur. They can be hard to understand what the table is holding, hard to find what you are looking for. Data on the table can be duplicated, so this increases the file size and it's hard to connect one table to another. In short, flat file databases are inefficient. A relational database has a more complicated structure as it is part of a relational database management system, otherwise known as an RDBMS. And it's designed to both hold large amounts of data and search for specific information in an efficient manner. Make sure you look at the link to get an overview of what a relational database management system is. That link is the one which says www.youtube.com forward slash watch. So as you can see from the picture, a relational database is a collection of data items organized into specific tables. The tables are linked together using primary keys, which we will talk about later. Data can be easily accessed by a range of people who may want to find different information from the same relational database using a function called queries. The relational database management system is the most popular way of storing data. Other models that exist are the hierarchical model and network model. To listen in more detail about a relational database management system, look at this video, https forward slash forward slash u2.be. As you can see, there are many advantages to using a relational database. Though people can access the data from different locations, the data can be centrally stored, which allows for better security, i.e. locked doors and easier management of the data. Finding that data is, as you know, done by using queries. Queries use specific language called Structured Query Language, or SQL, to retrieve information. If you have not clicked on the video links on the previous slide, please do so. This will give you an idea of SQL, as well as relational database management systems. In later lessons, we will have a look at how to write SQL queries. Security can not only be done physically, i.e. a secure room, but by the use of encrypting the data. This is a method to stop people with not the right access understanding the data. Databases can use passwords to allow certain people access to specific areas of the database. This is like our own school management system. As teachers, we have access to certain school records and pupil information. As teachers, 
we do not have access to financial records. Also with relational databases, validation rules can be built into the database to ensure that data which is entered is both sensible and formatted correctly. Duplication of data does not occur because of the way the tables within the relational database are organized. As a result, data integrity within the database increases. Data integrity is ensuring that the data is both accurate and reliable. In the database topic, possibly more so than any other topic, you will look at a large number of definitions you need to know. It's highly likely in your semester one mock and external exam that you will have specific database vocabulary words you will need to explain and show that you understand these words by giving examples. So please make sure you know them. Let's start with the definition of tables. Tables store the data. From the design view picture, you can see that you need to define each field with a name. Give it a data type and a description. In the general tab picture, you can give the field validation rules, saying that an age must be in a certain range or validation text can be shown if a validation rule is broken. Validation rules can also be created to form a domain. A domain is simply making sure that a value is shown in a certain way. So in the gender column, you may be asked to write male and female as M or F. Writing it as male and female would not be accepted. In the table view, you can also sort on each of the tables by right clicking the field name at the top of the table and selecting either ascending or descending. In this table, depending on the type of database and software application, will depend on the definition we give to each element of the table. So a table in Excel will have rows and columns. In Access, a flat file database will have records and fields, and a relational database terminology are attributes and tuples. Make sure you know the definition of a field, stroke, record, stroke, attribute. This holds similar information, i.e. a column for first names, a column for surnames and date of birth, etc. A row, stroke, record, stroke, tuple, holds related information to a particular person or thing. So as you can see for brindley.j, all the information on his records relates back to him. In a flat file database, a table is called a table. But in a relational database, which will hold more than one table, here each table is called a relation. Here in this picture, you can see that some of the tables are linked together through the use of primary and foreign keys which creates a relationship between two or more tables. Relationships are great for enforcing referential integrity. If you are a little confused about the terms primary and foreign keys and referential integrity, don't worry. We will be looking at these in a later lesson. However, feel free to look in your database booklet to read it up yourself. This material you should be familiar with. A database has four features. A table for storing data, a form for inputting and updating data. This is particularly useful for people who are not familiar with how to put data directly into the table. A query is used to filter information we want. We can extract data from several tables when needed. Queries can be refined by using operators such as more than and less than. Using logical operators such as the use of the word and and the word or and using wildcards. 
you will get a chance to use all of these query features during your practical lessons. Lastly, reports. These are used to create a hard copy, a printout of a particular table or query. A final definition word for the moment is entity. An entity is part of an entity relationship diagram, an ER diagram. You will have had some experience with these from last year. An ER diagram is a case tool, just like data flow diagrams, DFDs level zero and level one, flowcharts and pseudocode. These tools help to design systems and programs. An entity relationship diagram is used to design a relational database. And yes, you will be needing to know how to draw such diagrams for a relational database holding several tables. We will look at how to create ER diagrams in a later video. At the moment, an entity is represented by the rectangular box. The entity is a table stroke relation within the ER diagram and can hold data on a person, people, job, or just about anything. On slide two, we talked about how the internet and e-commerce needed databases to store our information. This is called online storage and is where we will have one or more computers connected via the internet. It allows us to access the data on these databases from anywhere, provided there is an internet connection. We will see how this is done in more detail when we look at database interconnectivity in a later lesson. A far simpler way of accessing a database is on our own computer, and this is known as local storage. When we use online storage, we will be unaware of the physical storage layout of the database. One layout could be centralized. This means that all the data is stored in one location, which, as we have said earlier, is good for security reasons. However, using this layout access to the database can usually only be done in one place. To add confusion to the term centralized, it can also mean this, that there is one database which holds data also called an index on the location of where information can be found on other databases at different sites. A distributed database is not a centralized database. A centralized database system could be made up of different databases at different sites but all of the information in this system is available to users from the one central computer. A distributed system does have databases at different sites holding specific information. This can be accessed at those specific sites by users. So for example, a retail shop would store the membership details of local members held at the store and not at the central office. In order for this system to work, there is need for a phone line or an internet connection and that employees can access this distributed system using an intranet, which is an internal network system only which company people can access using usernames and passwords. As you can see, there are many advantages to a distributed system. Users can quickly access the information they need without disturbing others. Data is retrieved more quickly with more people able to access the database. There is still high security with low duplication with data easily able to be managed. However, maintaining that level of high security and maintenance can be a problem due to updates and backups 
being at times problematic, such as a faulty or weak internet connection, or the updates and backups taking an excessively long time. So, so far we've talked about how we can access a database such as online or locally, with a local database being on a computer. We've seen how a database can be structured, such as a centralized or as a distributed setup. Now let's talk about the size of a database. We live in the information age. Information produces wealth and power. Companies need information from data produced by the following. Sales, customer preferences and customer purchases are some of the many data points a company will collect. This produces vast amounts of data that needs to be stored and analysed. Therefore, companies have what are called data warehouses. Now, this definition is important. A data warehouse is a huge database that will store and manage the data required to analyse historical and current transactions. Managers are able to create summaries from all of this data and customers can find their own credit card transaction history using an internet connection. A data warehouse will be set up as a distributed system. A data warehouse is made up of several data marts. So a data mart is a smaller part of the data warehouse, which holds information related to a specific part of the business. So a data mart would be for accounts, another data mart would be for sales, and another could be for human resources. This is why a data warehouse is distributed, because the data marts are in locations where people need this specific data. Though the physical data marts could be in different locations, these data mart databases are linked together not just physically with internet connections, but also linked by primary and foreign keys, so queries can be created that will have data stored in several data marts. So, as you now know, a data warehouse is made up of data marts, each data mart has specific information. So a data warehouse's structure is subject orientated, i.e. a data mart for customers, a data mart for products, a data mart for transactions, and so on. A data warehouse will have thousands of new data added to its databases every day from the various data marts. Further manipulation of the data may be done before the data is stored in the data vaults within the data warehouse. So we are constantly having current data becoming older data. As a result, the data warehouse's structure goes from current level of data being lightly summarised to older data being more highly summarised. We have seen how a data warehouse is made up of data marts. So what is a data mart made up of? Well, a data mart is structured as a star or as a snowflake. Therefore, the terminology used is that a data mart will have a star schema or a snowflake schema. A schema is a plan of how the information is to be organised in the form of that model i.e. star or snowflake model. At the centre of the star schema is the central table, or also called dimensions table. This table contains information on field names, data types and other properties such as field size and formatting requirements contained in the data mart. Surrounding the dimensions table are the fact tables, 
which will hold the actual data or facts. You should be aware of the contrast between a data warehouse, a data mart and a database. Let's see what the differences are between a data warehouse and a data mart. In a data warehouse, you will find a wide range of different types of data. However, in a data mart, this data is much more subject specific. There is also the obvious size difference. Data warehouses are much larger in volume to that of data marts. And finally, a data warehouse is going to have lots of connections to all of the data marts. A data mart, however, has much fewer connections in that it may only have one connection to the data warehouse. Contrast between a database and a data warehouse is considerable. A database will contain data for a limited amount of time. Data in a database is being constantly updated in real time and databases are being used for simple management day-to-day -day decision making. Data warehouses contain, as you know, huge amounts of data. This data will be stored in data warehouses, data vaults for up to 10 years. Data is put into the data warehouse as a batch process. This means that a block of data is uploaded to the warehouse, usually outside business hours. Finally, the data stored within the data warehouse is used to make future predictions about customer purchases and forward planning for the company's business. Data mining is a process which data warehouses and data marts use to find patterns and relationships among large sets of data. Data mining is used to extract this information from this data set and turn it into useful information. Have a look at the link on this slide. The video will give you insight into all things data mining. Make a note of the ways data mining can be used. Also on this slide, you will see a range of examples of how data mining is used. These are found in your booklet. In your booklet, you have three examples in bold. Make sure you know these in particular. Data mining needs a lot of processing power. Therefore, artificial intelligence, modeling and visualization is used. Artificial intelligence are intelligent machines that will learn from data and recognize patterns in that data. Modeling is where computers will use programs to predict what might happen in a given situation, like weather forecasting. Visualization is where computers will create the means by which data can be put into a visual context to help people understand the data. In its simplest form, this would be a graph. As you can see, data mining is a very powerful tool and can be both a force for good and bad. If you've not seen the video on the previous slide, please do so, as you will learn how a company used data mining to try and meddle in an election process. This highlights ethical issues which can arise in using data mining. There are also other concerning issues related to data mining. People are often not aware that their data is being used, which means that they are not able to give consent for the use of their information. Secondly, with so much anonymous data out there, about groups of people, there is often enough data to identify individuals. This goes against the right for privacy. Thirdly, information is easily accessible to many people. Employers will want to find 
what a prospective employee is like by looking at their social media pages during the interview process. Landlords will want to know what their future tenants are like. Fourthly, there have been many instances where companies, such as retail companies and banks, have been hacked and personal information sold on the black market. Finally, spam and junk mail can often be sent to people due to information being bought by an advertising company, again without individual consent. This concludes the lesson on database types and structures, data warehouses, data marts and data mining. Make sure you now follow my suggestion from slide one. Answer the questions in this week's sector lesson using your database booklet. Then the following day, answer them again without the database booklet next to you. Any questions you do not get correct, make a revision card for the information you do not know. I look forward to seeing you in lesson two, where we will look at data dictionaries, integrity and anomaly issues and explore in a little more detail what encryption is all about. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.